Let's learn to identify house sparrows as compared to other sparrow-like birds. There are many birds that are similar to house sparrows, but you can identify them. I'm Jeff with the Backyard Birds channel. I've been observing birds for years and learning the subtle differences needed to identify our native sparrows. I've also been trapping house sparrows for years to protect our native bluebirds, tree swallows, and other cavity nesting birds. When trapping house sparrows, you often inadvertently catch some of our native birds. The native birds are protected by law and must be released unharmed. If you like how-to videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel. Furthermore, you can support my channel by joining me on Patreon. Thanks for watching. So what are house sparrows and why would you want to trap them? Let me explain. This is a male house sparrow and it has taken over this bluebird nest box. The house sparrow, also known as the English sparrow, is an invasive introduced species in North America and elsewhere. It is an extremely aggressive bird that outcompetes native cavity nesting birds and will destroy their eggs, young, and even adults in order to use a nesting cavity or to eliminate nesting competition. They are not a protected species in North America and can be legally trapped and eliminated. For more information on house sparrows and their invasive nature, click on the link at the top of the video. There are a number of traps that can be used to capture house sparrows. All traps catch the birds alive. The elevator trap catches birds as they try to eat the bait. The elevator lowers and releases the bird into the holding chamber. The funnel trap captures the birds when they enter through the funnel to eat bait sprinkled in the trap. The nest box trap captures a bird as they enter a nest box. One issue with traps is they may inadvertently catch a native bird. Baited traps may catch any kind of bird attracted to the bait, such as native sparrows. Nest box traps may catch other cavity nesting birds, such as bluebirds. If you are using these traps, you need to be able to identify the birds that you capture so the native birds can be released. There is another introduced bird that is related to the house sparrow. It is the Eurasian tree sparrow. It hasn't spread across the country like the house sparrow. It was released in St. Louis in 1870 and has only spread to northeastern Missouri, west central Illinois, and southeast Iowa. Unlike the house sparrow, both the male and female look alike. Like the house sparrow, it also competes with our native cavity nesting birds. Because it is introduced, it is not protected by the Migratory Bird Treaty Act. Let's look at some of the characteristics of house sparrows. House sparrows are generally found in close proximity to humans. They are small gray birds about six inches long with a short thick bill that is specialized for cracking seeds. Plumages vary between breeding adults, non-breeding adults, and juveniles. The adult male and female birds do not look alike. The breeding male has a chestnut head with a gray crown, white cheeks, and a black bib. Non-breeding males lack the large black bib and chestnut head. The female has a buffy gray head with a tan eye line. Both have gray undersides and brown backs. Juveniles look like female house sparrows and are more common in the fall and early winter after the breeding season concludes. There are many kinds of birds that you may inadvertently catch in your baited traps, but the focus of this video is the New World Sparrows found north of Mexico. Before you get started on identification of your birds, you should have some kind of reference guide. I prefer Sibley's Guide to Birds. I recommend the second edition of the book or version 2 of the app. Bird calls are a bonus with the app. There are links for both in the video description. Remember, if you aren't sure if a bird you captured is a house sparrow, release it. Eliminating every brown bird that you think might be a house sparrow is counterproductive. Furthermore, native birds in North America are protected by the Migratory Bird Act. The following rules should help you identify your captured birds. Don't doubt yourself and look at all the traits of the bird in question. Do look at its size, bill, tail, back, head, breast, and general shape. 
don't just look at its general coloration. Go with your gut feeling. If you think it's not a house sparrow, it likely isn't. These are some traits to look at when identifying your captures. If the bird has a streaked breast, then it's not a house sparrow as they have solid gray breasts. If the tail is longer than that of a house sparrow, then it's not a house sparrow as house sparrows have short tails. If the bird is noticeably smaller or larger than a house sparrow, then it's not a house sparrow as all house sparrows will be the same size. If you have a bird that you think is a house sparrow, look at its bill. Does the tip have a small curved hook? That is a trait of a house sparrow, and they use that special bill to kill their competition. Let's take a look at the large group of birds are native sparrows. There are 42 species of native sparrows that are found north of Mexico in the United States and Canada. Don't expect all 42 in your backyard as many are habitat specialists or have a small geographic range. But some of the 42 species can be found in a typical residential yard in large swaths of our countries. Some will say it is impossible to identify native sparrows, but all have unique characteristics. Sparrow identification requires you to look at overall shape, size, and coloration. Many of our native sparrows scratch with both feet simultaneously. House sparrows do not. All native sparrows nest low in bushes or on the ground. House sparrows nest in cavities like birdhouses or nest boxes. Some native sparrows are very regional in their distribution, while others are found in a wide geographic area. Some native sparrow species have color variations across their range, such as being darker in one region than in another. I've included links to each species from the All About Birds website in the video description. Use the range maps to see if a species occurs where you live. The native sparrows are also known as New World Sparrows. I've grouped them by genus and ordered them by their taxonomy. The sparrows in this genus are not likely to be found near house sparrows due to habitat differences. The Rufus Crown Sparrow is found in southern Arizona in the Sonoran Desert. The Bottery Sparrow is found in southern Arizona in desert grasslands. The Cassin Sparrow is found in the dry grasslands of the southern Great Plains and southwestern United States. The Bachman Sparrow is found in grassy pinelands in the southeastern United States. The sparrow in this genus is not likely to be found with house sparrows because they do not share the same habitat. The grasshopper sparrow is found in grasslands across the United States and southern Canada. The sparrow in this genus is not likely to be found with house sparrows because of habitat differences. The olive sparrow is found in extreme southern Texas in thorn scrub. Some of the sparrows in this genus frequent the same habitat as house sparrows and may be accidentally captured. The chipping sparrow is found across the United States and Canada. It is frequently trapped and can easily be distinguished from house sparrows by its small size. Note its winter plumage is different from its breeding plumage. The clay-colored sparrow is found in the central United States and Canada. It's possible to catch one, but I never have. The black chin sparrow is found in the desert southwest. It is unlikely that they would be found with house sparrows. The field sparrow is found in roughly the eastern half of the United States. It could be caught in a trap, but can easily be distinguished from house sparrows by its white eye ring and pink bill. The brewer sparrow is found in the western half of the United States and Canada in sagebrush habitat, so is unlikely to be found with house sparrows. The sparrow in this genus is not likely to be found with house sparrows due to its unique habitat. The black-throated sparrow is found in the western part of the United States in open shrubby desert habitat. The sparrow in this genus is unlikely to be found with house sparrows as it prefers grassland habitat. The lark sparrow is found roughly in the western two-thirds of the United States and south-central Canada. It is a bird of grasslands with few shrubs. The sparrow in this genus is unlikely to be found with house sparrows as it is a grassland species. The lark bunting is found in the central plains of the United States and southern Canada. It is a grassland bird. The sparrow in this genus is sometimes found in the same habitat as house sparrows. 
The American tree sparrow breeds in the Arctic but winters in the United States and southern Canada. It can be distinguished from house sparrows by its long tail and bicolored bill. It also has a spot in the center of the breast. The sparrow in this genus may be found in the same habitat as house sparrows but is unlikely to be confused with them. The fox sparrow breeds in much of Canada and the northwestern United States but winters in the southern United States and west coast. It prefers dense thickets, but the breast streaking and size separate it from the house sparrow. The birds in this genus are unlikely to be confused with house sparrows. The dark-eyed junco is found across the United States and Canada. It winters in the United States and southern Canada. There are numerous races found in different areas, but none really resemble house sparrows. The bird is frequently caught in baited sparrow traps. The yellow-eyed junco is only found in extreme southern Arizona and New Mexico in pine and pine oak forests. The birds in this genus are often caught in baited traps, but they are all larger than house sparrows. The white-crowned sparrow is found across the United States and Canada. It mostly breeds in Canada and winters in the United States. The first-year birds do not look like the adults. The immatures are most likely to be confused with female house sparrows, but their head pattern is different. The golden crowned sparrow is found on the Pacific coast in winter and is larger than a house sparrow. The Harris's sparrow winters in the central and southern United States and breeds in the far north of Canada. It is much larger than a house sparrow with differing plumage. The white-throated sparrow winters in the eastern United States and Pacific coast. Much of Canada is its breeding range. It is unique in having a white form, which has a white crown, and a tan form, which has a tan crown. First-year birds have some streaking on the breast. It is larger than a house sparrow and can be distinguished by its size. The birds in this genus are unlikely to be found with house sparrows, as they prefer sagebrush habitat of the western United States. The sagebrush sparrow is found in the western United States in sagebrush and desert scrub habitat. The bell sparrow is similar, but found in the sage and chaparral of the west coast. The single species in this genus is unlikely to be seen with house sparrows. The vesper sparrow is a bird of open fields and grasslands across the United States and southern Canada. It is unlikely to be seen with house sparrows and is differentiated by its size and streaking. The birds in this genus are unlikely to be confused with house sparrows because of their smaller size and different habitat. The Leconte sparrow breeds in marshy areas of grasslands of the north central United States and Canada. The seaside sparrow breeds in salt marshes of our southeastern coasts. The Nelson sparrow breeds in marshes of the northern plains and northeast coast. The salt marsh sparrow breeds in coastal marshes of the east coast from Maine to Virginia. The single species in this genus does not share the same habitat as house sparrows and is unlikely to be seen with them. The Savannah sparrow is found across the United States and Canada. It prefers grasslands and fields unlike the house sparrow. I've never caught one and they have streaks unlike the house sparrow. Birds in this genus do not share the same habitat as the house sparrow. The Baird Sparrow only breeds in the prairies of the northern plains of the United States and Canada. It is a rare species and is unlikely to be found with house sparrows. The Henslow Sparrow is found in the eastern United States in thick grasslands and wetlands. It is unlikely to be found with house sparrows. Some of the birds in this genus may frequent the same habitat as house sparrows. The song sparrow is found across the United States and southern Canada. It prefers open shrubby habitat and populations have regional differences. It is often caught in traps but can easily be distinguished by its breast and head streaking. The Lincoln sparrow is found across the United States and much of Canada. It winters in the southern United States and is mostly seen as a migrant. I have trapped this sparrow but its fine streaking distinguishes it from house sparrows. The swamp sparrow is found in the central and eastern United States and Canada. They prefer marshy habitats but can be seen elsewhere during migration. 
I've only seen it in my yard one time. The birds in this genus are much larger than house sparrows. They are western birds that have unique habitat requirements. The canyon towhee is found in the desert southwest. The Abert's towhee is found in the Sonoran Desert. The California towhee is found on the west coast. The bird in this genus is unlikely to be found with house sparrows. The Rufus Crown Sparrow is a bird of rocky hillsides of the southwestern United States. The birds in this genus are much larger than house sparrows and are unlikely to be confused with them. The green-tailed towhee is found in the western United States in shrubby mountainsides and sagebrush habitats. The spotted towhee is found in the western and central United States in thickets. I've seen them but never caught one in a trap. The eastern towhee is found in the eastern United States in thickets. They can be found in residential yards. That concludes the overview of the 42 New World Sparrow species found north of Mexico in the United States and Canada. Good luck distinguishing house sparrows from the New World Sparrows. It takes time, but you will learn to distinguish different kinds of birds and name them to species. If you accidentally catch a native bird in one of your traps, remember to release it. An excellent resource for learning to trap and identify house sparrows is the House Sparrow Control Group on Facebook. The group has more information on trapping and deterring house sparrows. Furthermore, you can share pictures and ask for help with identification. There is a link for it in the video description. I hope this video helps you distinguish our many native sparrows in North America from the introduced house sparrow. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Do you have a question? Leave a comment and I will respond. If you know someone who could learn from this video, share it with them. Hi, it's Jeff. If you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Click on the bell to be the first to know about my new videos. Go a step further and join me on Patreon to support my effort to bring you the content that you desire. You can watch more of my videos to learn about nature.